In one of my most recent videos, I said a lot of negative things about Canva and some people were not happy with what I said, okay? I realized that Canva is probably the worst tool that you can possibly use to do anything remotely creative. I kind of stand by that, but keep in mind that Canva is actually a great system if you want to do like one-off things, right? You have a new schedule, you would like to make a cute visual, post it on Twitter and then boom, get rid of it, you're done. Canva is great for that. You want to make a quick Instagram story, Canva is great for that. But if you want to do proper graphic design, if you're designing something where it it has to do with your brand and you have to pick a specific graphic style and you want it to look as good as possible and indistinguishable from other people's stuff, then Canva is not that good. If you're watching this and you're an avid Canva user, you can't tell me that every time you go to a Twitch stream and they use Canva, you can immediately tell. That's a problem because as soon as everything becomes uniform, then where's the creativity in that? That being said, today we're going to be using Canva to make a Twitch overlay. We're going to be making an intermission screen only using Canva. Maybe I'll quickly show you how to make one in Photopea after that. But if you don't want to go through the trouble of meticulously creating your own graphics, then you're going to be happy because today's sponsor basically takes care of all that. If for some reason you don't know anything about Own Pro, it is an all-in-one service that gives you everything you need in order to be a successful live streamer. You get access to a lot of overlays. I'm talking a lot. I'm talking 600 plus overlays that are each available in at least nine languages. All the overlays are one-click installed, so no stress for that. You get a Twitch chatbot to moderate your chat and also add custom commands. But this is not what we're here to talk about. They just added this new thing. If you go in your dashboard and you go to tools, you will find goal bars. So yes, that makes the rest of this video irrelevant because you can just go up there, click create goal, select what type of goal you want, subscriber goal, for example, put a title, help me get a glittering unicorn, and then you can choose your style. And of course, in good old owned fashion, you have a ton of options, like a lot. Let's go with the Arcade Pro, just click here to select it and then enter the goal amount. Boom, let's go for 50 subs. Then you can set for the goal to end at a specific date or not, click save and publish. From there it's easy peasy, copy your URL to the clipboard, go to your OBS, add it as a browser source and boom, you have a way better looking sub goal than the original Twitch one. Keeping in mind that you can set it up for follows, you can set it up for bits and for donations. Anyways, I'll let you check it out over at own.gg slash getlevelpro, that is O-W-N-3-D.gg slash get level pro. So we go to canva.com and we are already logged in. Usually you would want to type whatever you want to create. Let's say Twitch overlay, for example. I haven't seen what they have. Let's click on that and see what's up. So a lot of those actually just look like webcam borders. Like this one is just a thin line. I guess you could call that an overlay, but it doesn't give you anything that, that differs from a webcam overlay, right? Some of them do have the labels bar like this one, but as you can see, it's paid. This one is also paid. That is legit a two minute design on, on Photopea. Anyways. I'm going to stop this slander. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click. I'm going to create something similar because I don't really have a choice. Let's click on create a design and let's go with custom size this time. We want to go uh, 1920 by 1080 and then create new design. Nice. While we're here, we're going to go to photos on the left side here and we're going to find something cool. I'm going to type something like uh, abstract. OK, so I do have some stuff with transparency, which is which is cool i guess this is pretty nice might get back to this later is that text on top of it oh those are pro <laughs> i can't use those oh no all right let's use this i'm gonna click and drag the corners to make it bigger nice and basically on an intermission screen what you usually want is a space for your webcam to be like full screen basically and then a place for your chat and then a spot for your labels bars some intermission screens will have a spot for your gameplay like if you're in the lobby or something like that or if you want to display your logo if you want to play some clips whatever you want to do uh, it's cool to have like a, a cool empty space like that so we're gonna go to elements we're basically gonna put a bunch of uh, rectangles it would be cool if i could find like some round rectangles or maybe some some extra let me click on lines and shapes and see what i can find and that's it that's all i get when it comes to lines and shapes all right looks like there is a rounded rectangle here so i'm gonna click on that can i have like an outline uh no i don't okay canva is like no you can't you just can't have an outline on your uh let me delete that I'll click on that one that one comes with an outline nice please tell me i can i can control the thickness of the outline Nope. All right. No, I can't. Uh, let's delete that one and let's try this one. At least it has a thinner. What is this? Why is there two? What is going on? Nope. I guess we're going to go with the simple one then. Okay, cool. 
cool, 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 cool. Now, if I stretch it out, will it maintain the proportions of the rounded uh, rectangle? Let's see. It does. That is cool. That is great. That is amazing. It's not stretching it out. It's really keeping the curve really, really, really curvy the way it's supposed to be. I love that. All right. So we're going to go for something that is kind of like a wide screen. We're going to have the labels bar at the bottom of the webcam. So this is the spot where the webcam is going to be nice. And we're going to have the chat on the right here. And then uh, we'll keep a spot for that lobby gameplay, basically. Boom. Click on it again. Let's do that. I'm, I'm actually really happy about the proportions here. Let's click on that. Now for the gameplay, it doesn't really matter if it, uh, if we have a 16 by 9. We're going to eyeball it so that it's it's closer to 16 by 9. On this spot, it really doesn't matter that much. You're not meant to actually watch the gameplay from there. OK, cool. What I'm actually well, technically I could be like, hey, you're done. <laughs> but let me go ahead and add some stuff for the labels. We're going to add three of them, maybe another rounded rectangle one. And this time I'm going to grab that oh i can't stretch that out anymore that kind of sucks let's see if i have any other options maybe a thin rounded rectangle would be cool nope now the quote unquote rules of graphic design makes it so that hey i started with something rounded i gotta keep it rounded in order to maintain the style but i'm struggling to find something that i can make very very thin and also rounded i guess that's the closest one let's click on that and let's see I can't even stretch that from top to bottom. <laughs> oh my God. Like that, maybe. Nice. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, uh, top here. What is that? Transparency. Let me lower that a little bit. Actually, I'm going to give it color first. So we want to basically go with those blue colors. That's pretty cool that it takes the photo colors and it gives you the main colors here. So that's, that's pretty nice. So that's my main color, is it? Okay, how do I change the secondary color? Right there. Nice. I like that. Okay, we're gonna lower the transparency a little bit. Nice, and we're gonna duplicate this. How do I duplicate? Okay, copy, paste. Nice, we're gonna keep it in line. Paste, keep it in line. Nice, can I select multiple things? Let me hold shift. Yes, okay. Look at that, look at me being all positive about Canva. Is that beautiful? I can even scale them together. Pretty nice. If I really wanted to, I would keep this, I would like put this here, but let's put it down there. The thing is we're gonna cut out those parts once we get into OBS later on. And then from here, what I would want is basically add some, some logos. So I can go there and I can upload some stuff, but usually you want a heart for follows, you want a star for subscribers, you want a bit icon for the cheers, which is probably the only Thing that i'm gonna upload here let me click upload media and i'm gonna go find in my stocks that diamond right there nice i'm gonna click on it boom doesn't matter if the the edges are so jagged because i can lower it like that okay now back can i zoom in on this yes i can the bottom here there's a zoom thing okay not too bad not too bad let's see if they actually give me some um some icons like a heart okay i just want like i just want a normal shape or maybe in shapes actually i didn't look for a heart or anything are there no hearts in the shapes there's no way there's a heart here okay there we go nice uh we're gonna change the color doesn't have to go with red i might even keep it purple just for the spirit of twitch so i can use my arrows to move things around all right and let's say we want a crown so i'm gonna go under elements and lines and shapes actually no i want a star that's for subscribers All right, this is what we made. Does it look good? Uh, no, but you made it with Canva, so. <laughs> I wanna click on that bits icon and there's edit image here. I wanna see what that does. Oh, I can just add a bunch of filters. Can I just put a color? <laughs> All right, let's actually give those some colors. See how that looks. I really don't like how it looks. I really don't like how it looks. But anyways, chat is not going to be transparent. So we actually do want to have a certain um, color there. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to give it that color and I'm going to make that transparent too. So reminisce of um, the labels bar. Nice. So your chat is going to appear here. Give it a cool look. And then the rest, if you want, you could even go like with a green screen, right? You can make this green, make that green. And then you just chroma key it, but you don't, it doesn't matter what color you pick. Just pick something that is not blue, like your background. All right, let's click share and download PNG. Even though we can't have transparency, click download. 
click save and you're good. Now let's open up OBS. I'm gonna create a new scene, all right? And now I'm gonna add it as an image because that's what it is, PNG image. And click add, go to image and go find, you can call it whatever you want. You can go find it. It's right there, double click, click okay, right click, filters plus to add a new filter and then you can use chroma key if you're going to use green or you can use color key and then pick whatever color you picked for your transparent parts right so chroma key okay it's already transparent nice now what i can do is add my camera for example so you're going to click plus to add a new source you're going to click video capture device call it whatever you want it's going to be your camera call it camera and then uh wait oh hi it's me boom I actually want to flip this so right click, transform, flip horizontal. Nice. You want to drag this behind our overlay, right? Because it's transparent and boom, there you are. Now you can adjust it or you can keep it that way if you want to. I'm going to adjust it so that it really fits that screen that we created. And then here, uh, you would put your game capture device, right? On the top right side, I don't have a game open, so I can just put a media, I can just put a video of a game, right? So that would be the game. Again, drag it underneath the overlay and then place it to make it fit. It doesn't matter if it doesn't fit perfectly. No one's gonna actually be watching the gameplay from uh, this screen. It's also under my webcam. I, uh, I cropped and I didn't tell you how to crop it. Uh, you hold Alt on your keyboard and then you drag the sides to crop, right? That way you can fit anything into anything. Boom, just like that. So while you're in the lobby, you're in your intermission screen. I'm not gonna show you how to add your chat. Watch my full OBS tutorial for that. If you're using Stream Elements, if you're using Streamlabs, you just go, you add a chat, and then you add it as a browser source. But this is it. With Canva, you successfully made this overlay. Uh, now, before I go, I just wanna show you how quickly you can do it while using uh, Photopea, for example, and why I don't use Canva. Let's go to photopea.com. I'm gonna try to comment, uh, to comment everything I'm doing. A new project, we're gonna go 1080p, 1920, 1080, and we're gonna go 300, DPI high quality now if we wanted to go from a picture we would go from for a website that has um, copyright free images we would go to abstract and we can find whatever we want I like that one copy this one and the advantage with Photopea is that you really have access to everything I'm gonna press Control V boom I'm gonna press Control Alt T to transform and I'm just gonna drag this until it fills the whole thing Nice, press V to go to the move tool in case you weren't there. <laughs> and now I'm gonna use my rectangle tool to the left here, boom, I can click here. And if I want it to be rounded, I can just add a corner radius, but we're not gonna do that now. I'm just gonna drag like this and I'm gonna eyeball. I can hold space to move it while I'm adding it. Okay, that's nice. While I'm there, I'm gonna move my mouse a little bit and I'm gonna create the box for the chat. Nice, and I'm gonna quickly create the one for the gameplay. Now I can go and individually modify them. Control Alt T by clicking on the layer and I can hold Shift to stretch just like that. And if I have the move tool selected, pressing V, I can move them with my arrows on my keyboard. Okay, boom, boom, boom. That's pretty nice. Now I'm gonna group those. I'm gonna put them all together and I'm gonna press Control G. Boom, they're in a group. I can move them together. I can turn them off. But I'm gonna duplicate this group because I just wanna have uh, borders. I'm gonna duplicate this by holding Alt and dragging up. Boom, now I have two groups. I can turn one off. And I'm gonna add some borders. And there's multiple ways of doing this. If you have uh, shapes, you can just click the shape tool and then add a stroke. But I'm gonna use the effects panel because it's one of the most powerful things that both Photopea and Photoshop have. Add a stroke. Boom, it actually added it, but it's also red, so you can't see it. I'm going to go and click that color. As soon as you have a color picker, it's uh, gonna turn into a color picker. So you can just pick whatever color you want from anywhere you want, right? We're adding it to the stroke, right? So this color is like a blue so i'm gonna exaggerate that blue a little bit maybe not too much nice i'm gonna click okay and here i can check the width of the stroke let's go for six i really want it to be visible actually let's go for eight all right that's nice no nope, never mind let's go for four <laughs> Okay, cool. Let's add a drop shadow. Nice. So now it feels like it's uh, it's physically there. It's hovering above that wall. We're going to play with the angle. And this is basically the angle where the light would be coming from. So down that way. Let's bump up the distance a little bit. We can make it a little softer with the size. It just looks better. <laughs> Now, even more than that, we can add a bevel and emboss to make it like bump up a little bit. You see that? The cool thing is with transparency later on, we're gonna be able to, to play around with that a little bit. So we want the depth to be a little bit more. We actually want the size to be a little lower. We don't want that effect to be too visible. Three should be fine. Maybe two actually, that's good. Okay, click okay. 
And let's say I want more saturation on that red. I'm gonna click on that layer. So whatever I add next is gonna be on top of it. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer, which is gonna be vibrance, all right? And I'm gonna bump up the vibrance. So we have better colors, basically. I'm done with this. I can click on anything else. Can even turn off this panel. I remember the red is all the parts that are gonna be transparent. We're not actually gonna use this specific red. We're gonna use the red from the background. Let me add my labels bars, actually. Let me create that by doing this. I'm just gonna click on the rectangle tool. I'm gonna put one rectangle down. And now, since we are working with some sort of arrow shape like that, I'm gonna click and hold on that tool. I'm gonna go to custom shape. And up top here, where it says shape, I'm supposed to find a bunch of shape, whatever shape I want. I'm gonna click on this arrow shape right there, and I'm gonna create one. I'm gonna hold shift to maintain proportions. So it's kind of perfect, you know? And we want it big like that. Let's drop it. Okay, it created a new shape. Now I can control Alt T, right click, flip horizontally and drop it towards the middle. We want the arrow to show. Let's click enter and let's double click on the icon of the shape and let's pick the color that we want. I think that color is nice. Cool. I'm gonna hold Alt while I click on that arrow. So it basically will limit itself to the rectangle underneath it. Boom, now I can move it around and it's not gonna move away from that rectangle basically, right? Nice, okay, now let's pick actual colors. Double click on this, being the rectangle at the bottom and pick a color that really resembles the actual red that you have here. If that's what you want, you can also go with white, for example, but I kinda like this red, nice. Click OK. Now you successfully created one labels bar. I can press Control, select the arrow that's on top of it, hold Alt, drag drop and just move it. If you wanna learn another way to duplicate is while I'm in here and I know both of those are selected, I can hold Alt, drag and drop, and then drop it. I'm gonna select all of them, the whole labels bar, and I'm gonna control G to group them. That way, I can go to the frames here. They have this effect that I added, the bevel, emboss, stroke, drop shadow. I can hold Alt, drag, and then just drop it. Boom, and now they have the same. Now the shadow is not what I want it to be. I can double click on it, manage the distance a little bit. Maybe I don't want a stroke on that one. Nice, click okay, you're good. Uh, now you just wanna add the shapes. I have a folder with a bunch of shapes here. So the bit I can drag, drop, it's right there. Hold Alt to drag from the center, place it with the arrows. We have a heart, that would be for followers, same thing. And let's say if you wanted a crown for like top uh, donator or something like that, you just place it and you're good. So now there's a couple of things I wanna do. I want the chat to be visible. So we're not gonna keep it with that bright red. So it's that top folder, it should be that one. I'm gonna double click on the icon and I'm gonna pick a color that I have around here. Okay, boom, that's nice. I can even go to opacity here and lower it just a little bit. Nice, so that's gonna be the chat. The other thing I wanna do is select those two shapes. So I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard and I'm gonna click on the icons. Then I'm gonna hold control plus shift to add another selection. Click on that icon. So I have two of them selected. I'm gonna collapse the group and now I'm gonna group everything together. Holding shift here, clicking on the bottom and I'm gonna group them, control G, nice. Now at the bottom of my layer list, I can click on raster mask created a mask and don't worry, don't worry. Press control I to invert the mask, boom. And there you go. Now I can turn off the background lock and turn it off. And I have a pre-transparent intermission overlay. All I have to do now is click on file, export as PNG, click save, click save. Now how do I add it to OBS the same way, except with less steps. Let's go here and I'm gonna turn off this overlay or better yet, I can just double click on the overlay and then replace it, click browse, New one, already transparent, nice. You don't even need the filter, but the filter is added now. And now you just have to adjust a couple of things. You want that camera to really fit, nice. You want that media source. You want that gameplay to be right there. And that's the big difference between Canva and something like Photopea. It's not necessarily more complicated. Maybe there's more steps to it, but that's the whole thing. Adding more steps like, hey, this would be cool if I could add a border to it. If I could add a drop shadow to it. Yes, that's the step that you're gonna add, but it's gonna make your thing look significantly better. And it gives you more 
more possibilities unlocking your own creativity. So of course, I'm not telling you to not use Canva, at least not this time, but I'm showing you how easy you could be making better stuff. Simply adding a little bit of glow, a little bit of shadows can really make your work stand out. Anyways, hopefully you learned something in this video. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. For now, I gotta thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud. Get level, out.